Hello. On behalf of the Clinic for Specialty Pain Services at Meadville Medical Center, uh, this is Dr. Anthony Colantonio. And I wanted to take about 10 minutes uh, of time to go over a very important topic with you. Uh, that topic uh, has to do with managing anxiety and discomfort uh, during procedures and what we can do to help reduce any of that anxiety uh, or procedural discomfort if and when you are going to have a procedure with us here. Uh, over the next few minutes, uh, I'm going to review our philosophy uh, on this topic. Uh, I will then talk about the philosophy of the insurance carriers and the differences uh, between their philosophy and ours uh, in regards to this topic. And we'll review the recent changes uh, to their policies on this subject. We will then turn uh, a few minutes to talk about how all of this affects you uh, and then conclude uh, with some information about what uh, essentially uh, may happen next uh, for you. Our philosophy on uh, administering medications for our patients during procedures to help reduce their anxiety, as well as to help reduce the pain that they may experience during the procedure, uh, is that we are very aware of uh, and greatly respect the importance and the, at times, necessity uh, for some of our patients to have their anxiety and their procedural pain uh, treated. There are many reasons that patients may need to have that done. Some of those reasons have to do with baseline medical conditions that our patients have. Other times it has to do with the fact that patients already have significant pain uh, in the area where we are going to be performing their procedure and they don't wanna experience additional pain. Sometimes the reasons have to do with other negative experiences that patients have had uh, elsewhere. Regardless really of the reason, as I said, our philosophy is uh, to be mindful that our patients want their anxiety uh, reduced and they wanna be comfortable uh, for their procedures. And the, the way to achieve that over 20 years of history uh, in my practice uh, has been to administer medications uh, for reducing anxiety and to help uh, reduce discomfort during procedures by giving the medications uh, in a route known as intravenous delivery. Uh, giving medications uh, can be done uh, in sort of a standard tablet or oral form, and it can also be done uh, by giving the medications through an IV. My clinical position on this has and continues to be that uh, the intravenous route is superior. A lot of that has to do uh, with the time that uh, is required for any of the medications once they're given to you to actually take effect in your body. Uh, and that translates significantly uh, to the reliability and the predictability of how well the medications uh, are gonna be effective uh, once given to you. The IV medications will take about three minutes uh, before the, they reach their uh, peak effect. And uh, in comparison, oral or tablet medications are going to take upwards of an hour. Uh, that creates significant challenges, uh, especially with the tablet medications uh, for timing the initial dose uh, of that medication in advance of the start of your procedure so that we have your, your anxiety adequately uh, addressed and we have you comfortable uh, before we even begin the procedure. Uh, and it also um, affects what we are or are not able to do once the procedure is underway. Uh, with IV medication, uh, we can reliably give additional medication right there during the procedure. It will take effect in a couple minutes. Uh, whereas if we're going to attempt to, to do that 
uh, with tablet medications, uh, we would be waiting upwards of an hour before we got any additional uh, effect uh, from the medication. Um, in addition to the uh, time uh, to take effect, there's also the subject of how long those medications may linger in your body uh, and how long you may have effects from the medications after discharge from our clinic. The intravenous medications are normally processed uh, more quickly than the tablet medications so that by the time you're discharged from our clinic, uh, the majority of the effect of the medication has already taken place. Uh, with the tablet medications, uh, it is more likely the effects of those uh, medications will linger much later into the afternoon, yet well after you're discharged from here, uh, even continue to affect you uh, for several hours uh, at home. So that is another big difference between uh, intravenous and uh, tablet routes of, of medication. And Hopefully that gives you a bit of a better understanding um, as to at least some of the main reasoning that we've had uh, behind the preference to utilize intravenous medications uh, and not tablet medications. So that's our philosophy. Um, the insurance carrier philosophy was in step with us uh, for many years, but has recently changed the language in their policies uh, on this subject has changed uh, this year. And uh, the insurance carrier position uh, is such that they believe most procedures can be done without medications for anxiety or discomfort. And it is enough to just numb the skin at the site the procedure is gonna be performed. They've also uh, said in their policies that uh, if and when any medication to reduce anxiety or provide uh, comfort during the procedure is uh, needed, that only the tablet form uh, is really sufficient uh, in, in their view. It should not uh, be, quote, medically necessary, close quote, to provide the intravenous medications uh, to achieve the reduction of the anxiety or to provide additional comfort during the procedure. So with these changes in their policy statements, um, we expect that there may not be coverage by your insurance uh, when intravenous medications are used uh, to control anxiety or to improve pain relief during procedures. Just as a comparison and an example, this is similar, I feel, to the lack of coverage for certain Prescription medications, many of you I expect are familiar with going to the pharmacy and uh, finding out that a medication your doctor prescribed uh, or, or your provider prescribed um, is not under tiered coverage uh, by your uh, insurance carrier. They are not gonna cover a branded medication that your provider uh, may have prescribed for you. However, they will cover uh, a similar yet definitely different version uh, of the medication as a generic. So the analogy here um, would, would I think be that the insurance uh, carriers um, would likely cover tablet form uh, for medications to reduce anxiety or improve comfort during a procedure uh, as that would be considered a tiered coverage option. Uh, but uh, they would not consider the intravenous medication uh, under tiered coverage. So how does all of this affect you? Uh, essentially, if you want the intravenous medication, you will have to review and sign a form known as an advanced beneficiary notice. That form lists the items that we expect your insurance carrier will not pay for, and the form also includes an estimate of the costs for those uncovered items. We certainly can and will submit the claim to your insurance if you wish, and we will also submit all the documentation possible with clinical reasoning uh, behind our, our uh, 
choice to try and use the intravenous medication route. Uh, however, we cannot guarantee that even providing all that documentation and rationale uh, will convince your insurance uh, to pay for coverage of the intravenous medication. There remains a significant chance that uh, they will not, despite all those efforts on our part. In that case uh, of a denial, uh, the cost would then fall to you as the patient. And uh, at that point, uh, there would be communication between you and the uh, financial office uh, at Meadville Medical Center regarding uh, payment and payment plans. So what happens next uh, if and when you are going to be scheduling a procedure with us uh, and there is a plan to include the use of medication to reduce anxiety uh, and to reduce discomfort associated with that procedure, you will be given the advanced beneficiary notice to review. You can uh, then choose the IV medication route or not. Uh, if you do not, uh, really at that point, the only options are going to be, uh, we try the tablet medications, which will carry all the limitations that I spoke about earlier, uh, or the other option would be no medication at all for reducing anxiety and providing more comfort during the procedure. And it would just include a use of what's called local anesthetic uh, or Novocaine type drug uh, to administer that at the skin where the needle or the needles for the procedure uh, are going to be placed uh, and it would be just then numbing uh, of that skin. In regards to all of this, boy, you, you do have the option to contact your insurance carrier to ask questions, uh, to complain. Uh, and I will tell you that uh, if they inform you this is your doctor's decision, uh, that is false. The insurance carriers have complete control and final decision-making on what they will and will not pay for, uh, and don't let them tell you or try to convince you otherwise. Please rest assured that we will always do our best uh, to take excellent care of you. Uh, we greatly appreciate your trust in us uh, when you come for any treatment and um, we will be available uh, to help answer questions or concerns that you may have uh, about any of uh, what I've shared uh, here with you. So I do hope this was helpful uh, and I thank you for your attention.